let's do some movement analysis. And I've put right at the top of the video here, all of the examples of movements that you really must as a basis have or be capable of analyzing. Okay, so a couple of things. We're talking about a press up, a throw in, a kicking action, a running action, uh, a, um, uh, a vertical jump, a basic squat and a bowling action. These are your minimum guys of what, you, and obviously we're gonna cover them here. But can I stress to you that you should be capable of analyzing other performances and I encourage you to do that in sports that you do yourselves or that you get a chance to take part in in lessons and so on you need to be doing this because again these are likely to be the questions you get asked in the exam but equally you could be asked others now with that in mind let's go right to the start and we're going to have a look at the try uh, we're going to have a look at the push-up so let's call this a push-up sometimes we call it a press-up of course now what I want where I want to um, uh, focus first is on the first phase which I'm going to call extension of the elbow extension of elbow okay so obviously elbow extension is taking place here because effectively the elbow is straightened out in this position okay now with that with that in mind what i want you to be thinking about is what caused that to happen well for that to happen the tricep has had to contract and pull upwards to straighten extend the elbow so what have we got here we have got that the tricep is the agonist or the prime mover okay so let me find my color tricep is the agonist tricep agonist and of course it's working concentrically okay and this is a this is a concentric contraction okay guys concentric it's shortening now interestingly when we look at the down phase let's call this um flexion of the elbow i'll call it elbow flexion what's interesting about this is that the tricep remains the agonist i'm going to say the tricep is still the agonist or you can say prime mover absolutely fine okay still the agonist the way the reason that is is because wow uh, because this tricep here as as we're lowering down towards the ground in this way the tricep is lengthening but it's still under tension it's controlling the movement preventing us flying downwards towards the floor therefore this is an eccentric contraction got some really noisy things going on around me i hope it's not bothering you guys too much if it gets any worse i'll, I'll stop and re-record this now then let's go to a football throw in okay so what have we got here first of all i want to look at well only i want to look at the elbow again so if we look at the preparation phase now we can only see the preparation phase here but the player has drawn the ball behind her head here and if you notice we've got this angle at the elbow that angle clearly is elbow flexion okay an elbow flexion in this sense is characterized is characterized by <clears throat> that is being done by the agonist being the bicep so the bicep is the agonist Okay, so the bicep is the agonist now when that arm comes forward and the arm is now here and the ball is up here what we've got there is we've got the throw haven't we so we've got the throwing action now when that throw happens we've now got the tricep which is agonist okay because it's of course extending the elbow we've got elbow extension and that movement is working concentrically so this is a concentric contraction but I also want to stress to you that this movement as well is concentric. So the bicep action of flexing the elbow is also concentric in this environment. Now let's take it further. We're now going to look at a kicking action. Now we've got a bit more to do this because we're going to look at hip, knee and ankle. So let's draw this out. I'm going to go hip first of all. Okay, so here's our hip. Now we've got the preparation here with the hip. So this is the preparation phase. Let me get rid of that. And what we can see here is that the hip is sort of come behind the body. So what have we got there? This is hip extension, hip extension. Okay, this is being achieved by the gluteals. So the gluteals are the prime mover or the agonist. And this is concentric. Now, when we follow through now to the kicking phase, the hip is now sort of in front of the body. So we've now got hip flexion. That's flexion when it comes in front of the ball and socket joint. We've now got the hip flexors, of course, that's what they do. And this is concentric. So we've got some nice analysis there of what's going on. Now, if we start to look at the knee, if I put the knee here, so here's the knee, we'll focus on the knee and the preparation. We can see that we've got, I'll just put K for knee, flexion. The knee is bent in essence, isn't it? That is being achieved by the, by the drawing back of the leg by the hamstrings. So the hamstrings, the group there, are performing that knee flexion. 
and also this is concentric they're shortening as they do that so okay it's concentric if we take that now just put a dotted line here if we take that now to the kicking action we, we now see the knee is extended so we've got k extension k extension never thought about that before and this is being done by the quadriceps remember we must not say quad we must write out quadricep okay and this is being done in a concentric contraction the muscle is shortening under tension so therefore it's concentric and finally guys we want to have a look at the ankle now this is there's a bit more nuance here and there's more of my an opinion as to what you want to do here but first of all let's look at the ankle here in the kicking this is definitely plantar flexion so remember plantar flexion is two different words unlike dorsi flexion the prime mover is the gastrocnemius long old spelling gastroc don't forget that c in the middle gastrocnemius there we go and this is a concentric contraction obviously if it was held into that position that's where we call an isometric that in that situation but the drawing back of it is concentric but when we get to the strike well first of all you've got to decide is this dorsi flexion what i'd certainly argue it's started to dorsi to go through dorsi flexion so i'm going to go for single word dorsi flexion okay this is being done by the tibialis anterior spellings tibialis anterior believe it or not that's an n in there tibialis anterior and again this is being done in a concentric way the tibialis anterior is shortening under tension so lots of information guys but hope the logic for you is nice and clear let's finish this off we've got a couple more to do and one of the big ones here i say finish it off we've got a lot to do here we're going to look at hip knee and ankle uh, when running okay so what we're going to do here is we need to make sure we know the difference between uh, we need the difference between drive and recovery okay so I just want to be clear when the leg pushes back this is drive when the leg pushes forward okay this is recovery so in in the image in the static image here drive is the back leg recovery is the front leg okay so I just want you to be aware of that now what we're going to do here is we're going to look at the hip so let's look at the hip first we'll put hip over here so hip if we look at the drive leg for a second the hip is here and it's behind the body we've got hip extension the, the hip is behind the body this is done by the gluteals very much like what we just did and it's done by a concentric contraction now if we look at so that so that's for the drive phase if we now look at the recovery phase let me, let me put it into recovery if you look at the recovery phase we've got hip flexion that has to be done of course by the hip flexors and again this folks is concentric I'll tell you what i'm going to do here i'm going to switch to my pink for everything that's going to be the drive phase if we now look at the knee at the knee okay well the knee and the drive phase here we've got k extension knee extension this is being done by the quadriceps as the prime mover these are the muscles that are contracting to create that motion and it is concentric so lovely we've got a nice concentric action but if we now have a look at the recovery legs if i get the same color we now have k or knee it's bending here so we've got flexion we've got the action there being done by the hamstrings group and that that action is the shortening of the hamstrings so it's got to be a concentric <laughs> contraction of those hamstrings and, fi and to finish that off folks let's move on to the to the ankle as well okay and with the ankle obviously down here on the drive leg the ankle is going through plantar flexion pf this is being done by the gastrocnemius which is the prime mover gastrocnemius and of course again it's concentric so lots of consistency here whereas in the um recovery phase what have we got we've got dorsi flexion df this is being done by the tibialis anterior and again it's conch it's concentric okay guys so we must be able to understand and to analyze that with that within performances i promise you we are getting there guys i know it's a long session but it is worthwhile doing it this way this is what we would call a vertical jump so let's call this a vertical jump vertical jump and we're going to look here at a couple of things that are really important first of all we want to take a look at the hip in the takeoff phase okay in the hip in the takeoff phase so believe it or not this is the takeoff phase over here so what have we got here in the hip well the hips have been sort of forward and they're coming back so in the takeoff phase the hip is going through extension it's moving back it's actually coming back to the neutral position now that's big 
If that's the case, the gluteals are the driving force, they're the agonist, and it's conch, it's concentric. Now, if we have a look at that hip in the landing phase, folks, if we look at the landing phase now, what do we find? Well, the hip is now coming in front of the body, so in the landing phase, let's call this landing, we now have the hip going through flexion, but, and this is really important, what I'm going to say here, guys, the prime mover remains the gluteals. They act as the brake and slow this motion down. And this, therefore, is an eccentric contraction. Now, if we take it further, let's have a look at the knee. This time the knee, the takeoff phase, obviously, we've got, let me put knee here. We've got K extension, straightening of the knee. This is being done by, I'll just put Q for the quadriceps, and this is a conch. A concentric contraction. If we now take it to the landing phase, look what we've got. We've got knee flexion, but this now is still being done as the prime mover is the quadricep, this muscle group here. And if you don't believe me, go and try and do some really explosive landing and see how it feels. And this is where the muscle is lengthening, acting as a brake, slowing down our descent, and it's an eccentric contraction. And finally, guys, at least for this one, if we look at the ankle, I promise you we are very nearly there. It's been a long session, this one. If we look for me as well, if we look at the ankle in the takeoff phase, look, we've got plantar flexion. We know that that's the gastrocnemius. I'll write this out because lots of people tend to spell this one wrong. We know that's, that's the gastrocnemius. And it's also a concentric contraction. But in our landing phase, and this is really interesting now, we get dorsi flexion. Notice, effectively, the toes coming up towards the shin. This time, however, the gastrocnemius remains the prime mover because it acts as a brake, slows down the descent towards the floor, and therefore is an eccentric contraction. So have a look at that, guys. When landing, eccentric, eccentric, eccentric. It's a slowing, braking action. And of course, that makes perfect sense to us, one would hope. Now, we're nearly there, guys. We're now doing a basic squat. And what we want to have a look at here is the same three joints. So let's do the basic squat in the downward uh, in the downward phase. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say that this is the downward. Oops. This is the downward. Why is that not working for us? Just bear with me a second. So here's the downward phase. So here's the hip. So we've got hip in the downward phase, down or, or pattern B. What have we got here? The hip is in front, that is hip flexion. That has to be done, that has to be done um, by the gluteals, because we're moving downwards, we're, we're slowing that down. Now normally hip flexion is done by the hip flexors, right? But in this case, the gluteals are the prime mover because ultimately we're slowing down, we're not, we're not falling towards the floor, we're not contracting downwards, we're breaking downwards. And this is an eccentric contraction, exactly as it would be for the landing. That we just had a look at. If we look at the knee, okay, what have we got here? We've got knee flexion. That is being done. Um, <clears throat> in this case, that would normally be the hamstrings causing flexion, but we've got the quadricep, which is lengthening, extending, um, and it's working eccentrically, eccentrically. And we've also got dorsi flexion at the ankles. If I put ankle over here, We've got our dorsi flexion. Normally that would be done by the tibialis anterior, but it's being done by the gastrocnemius as the prime mover. It's controlling us downwards and the movement down, and therefore this is eccentric. Now, exactly the same really for the way up. If we look at the way up now, here's our way up of course, hip, knee, ankle. What we've got now is at the hip we've got extension. This is being done by the gluteals. This has been done conch, concentric in the knee. We've got the we've got extension. We've got the quadricep. Wow, you guys must be really sick of me on this one. And we've got conch, concentric. On the ankle, we're now starting to plant our flex. This is being done by the gastrocnemius. And that's being done concentrically. So again, the same analysis. Now to finish off this, folks. We, we really need to have, have a look at the idea of a bowling action, the bowling arm. So imagine this arm circling all the way around here. We call this circumduction. And the key and only thing I want you to be aware of with regard to circumduction is circumduction equals, let's do it this way, it would be abduction, abduction plus adduction 
plus flexion plus extension. So what was what color have I chosen? Extension. So what we're saying with regards to circumduction is it's a combination of all three of those movement patterns which create the circular motion, in this case the bowling action of Bumrah. Thank you.